First of all, this video will be aimed at those who are a bit late to the crypto markets who missed the movement in Bitcoin or perhaps just profited from such a movement but are now looking towards altcoins that have surged similarly, leading to certain thoughts, doubts and questions. Let's talk about fear of missing out today, FOMO, or fear of missing out, what it is, how to deal with it, and whether we should even fight it. To jump ahead, I will say that obviously, yes, this is one of those problems, mistakes that cause 90% of traders to lose money in the market. What is the nature of the fear of missing out? At the moment, if I am sitting and looking at the monitor where I see such a movement in Bitcoin and suddenly it turns out that I missed it, suddenly it turns out that I didn't buy Bitcoin, either here or here or earlier, nowhere, I didn't open any longs and God forbid I even bought some. And since on the advice of someone unknown, which is somewhere down there, and everything is rising without me, everything is rising past me, or maybe I, I don't know, bought an apartment and I'm looking here thinking, why did I buy an apartment? I should have bought Bitcoin. Or maybe I invested in the Russian stock market, which by the way looks like this to me. And I look at this Bitcoin, I look at the dollar at 104 and some thoughts arise. Many, not all, but many after this can't hold on and at least partially throw money right at the highs right here, buying Bitcoin here, buying the same XLM right here. And what comes out of this? Let me show you using the same example that I provided in the previous video. A good option is NEO, and consider NEO to look at the possible outcomes that have occurred in the past. NEO is a relatively old cryptocurrency that has also jumped a little up along with the entire market, but not significantly. Not significantly? That is 60-70%, 60-50, 60-70%, 60-70. Pay attention to the description, there will be a link to register on the Bybit exchange. This is the top exchange where I personally trade and it is number one in trading volume, liquidity and has the lowest fees. Just by this, you will save around several hundred dollars each month. And why do I recommend registering specifically through my referral link in the description? Through it, you will receive a cash bonus for registration ranging from $10,000 to $30,000 depending on the size of your deposit. Most of my subscribers receive $100, but if you have no deposit at all, you will be credited at least $10. If you are a large trader with a good deposit, you will be credited up to $30,000, but for large amounts, you will need to achieve the corresponding trading volume. On this page, click here and you can see what bonus you will receive for registration. The link is below. Enjoy watching. Let's model the following situation. I am, for example, really out of the market. Out of the cryptocurrency market, I mean. I am watching it and did not buy Bitcoin for a million rubles, if we count in rubles. I didn't buy it for five, and now it costs around 10 million rubles. And of course, I understand that if I didn't buy it for a million, it now costs 10 million rubles. Actually, I won't sell my apartment to buy Bitcoin for 10 million rubles. I really want to make up for it. After all, I could have earned that money. Yes, some say I could have bought Bitcoin in 2012, obviously. Oh, however, each of you could have bought Bitcoin a year ago, two years ago, three years ago and made a profit. Each of you could have bought Bitcoin at least before the start of this rise and earned from $60,000, $70,000 to one hundred. But I, for example, missed all of this and my conscience is gnawing at me. I see some conditional coin NEO which seems to not have gone up super high. Yes, it has grown. 70% but there isn't such a huge peak and I am getting into it. Let's pay attention to the following fact. This is what the old season looks like. I showed and explained this in detail in the previous video. Yes, this is old season. This is what the crypto winter looks like. This is old season. And right now, something like a crypto winter is happening too. Pay attention. Yes, the history of cryptocurrency is cyclical. This is all very clear and understandable using this graph as an example. And let's take a look at how this situation with the crypto winter works. A coin is hanging somewhere at the bottom, then it shoots up from the bottom by about 100% and back down by 70, then it shoots up again by 100% and instantly back down by 75, then it shoots up and back down by 50, yes it stabilizes somewhere there and alt season begins here. Let's look at a situation closer to us. The coin shoots up by 100% and then fluctuates down by 60. The coin shoots up, well, let's take this moment, yes, up by 100% and instantly pulls back by 30. The coin shoots up by 100% and drops to the bottom by 70. And here it shoots up again by 100% if we take it straight from the bottom or by 70. If we enter a bit closer to the actual moment, here we are buying. When we buy a coin that has just given, well, if not X2, then close to it, what does that mean? This means that the one who was accumulating these coins down here is now taking profits and these X2 are being transferred to us. And what does this lead to? Of course, if we judge from a long-term perspective, from the standpoint that I will buy now and hold for five years, it is obvious that Bitcoin has already soared, some XLM Stellar has soared, NEO hasn't soared yet. Yes, it has grown a bit, but it's clear. Yes, hasn't been such movement.
At some point within five years, this will happen. It's a different matter. But, as a rule, such a plan, such a calculation is not connected to the fear of missing out. It will be a purely weighed decision, and it is unlikely to be exactly here. When you buy a coin that has skyrocketed like this, it is more likely due to the fear of missing out. This is a bad entry point. I'll tell you this. For example, even if I am out of the market and sitting watching it for the next month, there will be better and more advantageous entry points. Coins will calmly give some kind of pullback like this, they will give some kind of downward trend, an exit from it, and so on. Those who do not believe, who are afraid, who want to invest all their money at the highest point, buying coins from those who have already made a profit on this movement, and are taking their profit x2, I will show you the next scenario. I showed it in the previous video as well, but let's pay attention to it once again. The very first entry point that I provided in Telegram was right here. After Bitcoin broke out of the flag, established itself above it, there was a retest level and then it flew higher. And immediately, about a couple of weeks later, there was a second opportunity to enter. Here, the coin flew up to the high. And from there, sales began. Oops, another retest of the level. A bounce, bullish engulfing, and here I provided the second entry point and it took off. What am I getting at? That if you missed one entry point, there will be another. If you missed it, let's say... The point flies up there, we look at the altcoins, where the entry point is, roughly speaking, yes, Litecoin took off, oops, look, minus 16% buttons. This is a bad example because, of course, the correction of such a relatively insignificant pullback. Now I will show you moments with better ideas. Here, for example, link bottomed out, level, breakout of the level, flew up, those who didn't take the breakout waited for a pullback with a retest, minus 16%, entered here. And again, we took off. Pay attention to those who didn't enter at the bottom, who didn't enter here, who missed this movement and jumped in at the highs. Yes, obviously it was possible to hold on, there was a relatively small drawdown here, one could have held through 15%, but even this decline was not endured by everyone. Some got liquidated, some exited at stop losses, some just panicked and bought at the highs and then started dumping positions in panic right here. A smart person, even if they missed such a movement, waited and found a smart entry point. A person who has already seen something in the market and tries to neutralize the fear of missing out so that it passes them by. In general, if you feel out of place right now, if you have some strong anxiety, if you want to urgently throw a lot of money in somewhere, catch a similar movement and make a lot of money, this is exactly what is called FOMO. What should be done about it? Try to calm down. Perhaps avoid watching the market for some time. And most importantly, do not make any trades based on such actions and emotions. This is the most important thing. And after you wait, after you exhale, after some movement passes, it doesn't matter, it can go higher without you, it can stall, it can pull back, the scenario doesn't even matter. But as soon as there is a good entry point that is not just at the highs simply because it has risen, and oh man, let me throw in at least some altcoin that hasn't shot up, for example, at the highs. Yes, it gave X2 there, but not X5 like some coins. As soon as your reasons for entering are not based on such logic, yes, maybe there is some pattern, some setup, but I don't know if you really don't know how to trade. I have two pieces of advice for you in the description of the Telegram channel. There is a pinned message. The free mini course on trading, you can check out the free lessons. And secondly, at least subscribe to my channel here or to my Telegram. I provided the last two entry points. And if anything, I will give entry points again and also exit points, by the way, if anyone is currently in the market. At least wait for these moments. And once again, Yes, it doesn't matter how the market will move, even if it goes up. But if a clear setup for continuation forms, it's not a problem to enter here. For example, if it becomes clear where the market will go next. Right now, you shouldn't buy at the highs. Generally, I would like to say that it is currently unclear where the market will go next, but typically, after such vertical rises, such declines follow. One of the latest examples is Bitcoin Cash. This was at the beginning of 2024. It shot up vertically, and someone jumped in here, yes, and immediately caught a minus of 30%. Those who were a bit more patient really wanted to jump in right here at the highs, but waited at least to enter during this drop of 30%, and upon the return, already had a plus of 50% in their balance. Do you understand how important it is to at least wait for something like this? Moreover, some may have completely missed this movement, jumping in right here at the maximum, and what happens after that? This is the situation, and it's 45% because it was flat here, maybe someone was averaging down, we have such enthusiasts, right? And then another minus 60%, right? In total, how much is the loss here? In total, minus 60 on top. In that case, the entire balance of those who succumbed to FOMO here would have been neutralized. What does minus 60% mean? To return the balance to its previous value, you need to make 139. If you achieve such a gain in crypto over two years, it will be a good result.
Yes, you can definitely make a profit in a month, but it depends on your level of risk. Are you using leverage and what is the size of your capital? Yes, if it's a significant amount, you probably won't take too much risk unless you're entering under emotions like FOMO here. In general, you shouldn't do that. So, I've expressed my thoughts, now let's be more constructive and go point by point. How can one learn to ignore the hype around coins? How can one learn to ignore FOMO? First, you should ideally develop your own strategy. What does it look like? I have it in an Excel spreadsheet along with my diary, where I keep track of all my trades and the rules by which I trade are written down. And if I don't have a rule written down that I enter with my entire balance after a vertical rise at the highs, meaning I use leverage, then I don't make such a trade. If it's written in your rules that you trade like that, then yes, go ahead and trade. The other question is, why are you trading like that? It's wrong. You'll realize this after a little while, as soon as you lose your balance, and you'll start working on editing your strategy. Well, most likely, if you develop your strategy, even if it's just with a pen on paper, at least in a notebook, if you write down ideas on how I should enter trades, most likely, you won't write that I buy after a vertical rise with some emotions. No. As a rule, obviously, it's a bad idea, and even a beginner can see that. The main thing is just to overcome yourself. But how? Once again? Well, at least write down the rules in a notebook with a pen, according to which, even if you have no experience trading, what do you think are some basic thoughts on where it's best to buy? Even if you have no experience, it's probably obvious to you that it's better to buy not at the highs, but here during some correction at some decline. If you at least write down such basic things, it will already be a plus. You will have less desire to enter the market at the highest points. Next, you need to focus. The second point besides your strategy is to focus on market analysis. That is, you should ideally look here with a cool head and roughly estimate how far the price can go, where a correction might start, what a reversal might look like, and so on. If you are really struggling and have no experience, at least subscribe to my channel. The last video before I post this has been uploaded. It's very useful, precisely answering the questions I just mentioned. That is, you need to focus on analysis, and based on your analysis, perhaps from the analysis you listen to, not just emotional statements that everything is currently flying into space non-stop. Even if it is flying like that, well, it's not a big deal. I'll sit on the sidelines. The most important thing is that I won't lose all the money I've saved for a year if I buy, and that doesn't happen. Based on the analysis, at least some correction, at least some possible reversal with a bottom format again, well, something like this kind of movement, and then catch it when it breaks out, and so on. There are actually many options for what to do. The most important thing, once again, is not to buy at the highs. Let's move on. Write it down in big letters and caps. Do not chase the crowd. Where the crowd is, money is usually lost. Not immediately, yes, for some time the crowd rejoices, 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 and then it all deflates. I'm not saying that right now the entire market, the whole crowd is entering here and it will all collapse. Oh, of course, it's a bull market. I explained how it will unfold, that it will take quite a long time, that it will grow, and so on. All of this may also fuel your fear of missing out. But when will the crowd start crying? They will start crying during some flash crashes like these, which will not affect the trend direction, but will you liquidate a huge number of people? And when will the crowd start crying? Well, maybe there will be some sideways movement here, someone might accumulate a position, and what will happen here? Those who just entered here will unload and then liquidate the crowd. This will not affect the trend at all. Well, I explained how the trend change will look, but the trend will not affect the crowd, and they will cry. And you will cry with them if you entered here, not, for example, here. So it can look absolutely different, but the essence is the same. Don't chase the crowd. Where the crowd is, money is lost. The next piece of advice, keep a journal. How does it look for me? I said, I have a table in Excel where I write down when I entered, for what reason, where I set my stop loss, what happened after closing, what the results were, and so on. Next, I record what emotions I felt. In ideal cases, there are also screenshots of charts. Well, I, for example, don't do that because it's inconvenient to analyze later. I used to do that and caught myself thinking that I don't return to it. Sometimes I'm even too lazy to screenshot charts or keep a journal. And the most important thing is that you shouldn't be lazy. Well, at least it doesn't matter how it might look. Also, write down in a notebook the basics of at least some of your key trades, key emotions. If you often open positions with a small balance using leverage and you're too lazy to write everything down, then at least record the key moments. Well, if you came in here with your entire balance, yes, trading with small amounts using leverage, then you just took a million rubles that you saved for a year and put it into the market, why not? It's flying up right now. And I will catch at least some part of the movement since I missed all of it. At least write down these key moments in your notebooks. And why did you make such a trade? What are you expecting from the market? 
Have you analyzed the risks? And what if suddenly, and so on, expand on it, the more detailed, the better. And then the most important thing is to return to this when, if something happens here, you will come back, look, and draw some conclusions. Maybe you won't participate in such things anymore. There is, you know, a basic trivial rule. If the market, or rather a coin, has risen by 50%, that's it. The train has left. The train has left. You shouldn't buy something that has shot up significantly, at least by 50%. Yes, if there's a small increase of 10-15%, it's still acceptable, but 50%, well, obviously it's not worth getting into that anymore. You will just be entering at the highs when there was an opportunity to enter much lower, a little earlier. Well, or here's a trivial example, Dogecoin. I saw the hype on Twitter, how Elon Musk is promoting it, how he is pumping it, but I didn't see any fundamental value. I didn't buy. Well, yes, I didn't make money on that, but I preserved my capital. What other options were there? Such movements, such coins. Well, after the rise, there's such a situation, down 70%. Moreover, it seems like an upward trend, down 70%. The most important thing is to stay with money. You will always find where to put it, how to earn, and how much. There are absolutely always entry points. As a practicing trader, I know this firsthand. Where to put money, where to enter. Such questions never arise. There are no problems. Problems arise when you do something foolish, freeze your capital, and in the best case, you just freeze it. In the worst case, you lose it. Yes, in such movements. Missed it? No big deal. You'll find another smart entry point. If you didn't find this entry point, but it was here, questions for you. In fact, there were, of course, entry points. Yes, I told you about this. Questions for you. Need to conduct an analysis. Why didn't I enter here? What did I overlook? What did I do wrong? Maybe I relied on something I shouldn't have relied on and so on. Or maybe I wasn't following the market and just started to pay attention now. Well, in that case, I was not the entry point. You'll find the next one. There's nothing wrong with that. You shouldn't buy at the highs, so what should you do? You need to subscribe to my channel and follow the links below to join Telegram and Instagram. I provide even more content there. And let me remind you that there is a free mini course on trading in my pinned message in the Telegram channel. Check it out to learn more about trading. Good luck.